many reasons to worship you for the abundant life that you give. Life itself, our life, family and friends, reasons to celebrate and to gather today. In your name and in your presence, in Christ we pray, amen. Please rise and body your spirit to sing. I go, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship the holy name, sing like this.
sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. God, I worship your holy name. I will worship your holy name. Uh, good morning, First Church. Uh, please join me for the call to community. We are rooted and grounded in God's love. We come because we need to be reminded of God's love for us. We seek to reconnect with God and one another. We come because we long to be loved and accepted for who we are. We seek spiritual community and connection that reminds us of who we are and God's love for us come because we try to give fully and authentically of ourselves. We gather for worship now. May, May we, we feel, feel free the, to worship, worship and, and be ourselves. ourselves. Amen. Just wanna praise you, just wanna praise you. Yeah, you brought that change, though I can in my hands. I'm gonna praise you, I'm gonna praise you. In the corners of my mind, I just can't seem to find a reason to believe that I can break free. But you see, I have been gone so long, but I hope it's gone. And as I lift my hand to understand I should praise you through my circumstances Shackles on my feet so I can dance I just wanna praise you Just wanna praise you Both that chains now I can lift my hand I'm gonna praise you And I'm gonna praise you Everything that could go wrong All went wrong at what time so much pressure fell on me. I thought I was gonna lose my mind. But I know you wanna see if I will walk through these trials. But I need you to lift this load, cause I can't take it no more. Shackles on my feet so I can dance. So I can dance. Just wanna play it. Just wanna play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broke that chain now I can lift my hand. Oh, I can lift my hand. I'm gonna play it. Shackles yeah, off my feet yeah. so I can dance. So I can dance. Just wanna praise you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just wanna praise you. I wanna praise you. Yeah, throw that chain now I can lift my hand. I can lift my hand. Just wanna praise you. Just wanna praise you. I'm gonna praise you. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. So I can dance. Just wanna praise you. Just wanna praise you. Broke that chain so I can lift my hand. Yeah. Just I'm gonna praise, praise you. you. I'm gonna praise you. Do you need a? Okay. I'm not Juliana, I'm Kitty. Why do we find it so hard to accept and love ourselves? How then can we love others if we don't start with self-love? Maybe we have, haven't found our people yet. Maybe we doubt that God uh, created us in love. Maybe we fear rejection. For all the reasons that keep us from embracing ourselves, let us pray together. Join me. God, 
Where can we feel at home as our authentic selves? Who will accept us as we are? God, our memory of rejection, speaks false words to us that we aren't good enough when you have spoken words of truth that we are loved. We are created in your image. Our fear of rejection prevents us from being our full selves. We wear a mask. We withhold the truth. We fail to share our gifts. Forgive us, God, and help us to accept and love ourselves. Help us to hear your voice above all others that speaks only words of love into our lives. 1 John 4, 7 to 8 reminds us that God is love. We are born in love and called to love. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The person who refuses to love doesn't know the first thing about God because God is love. So you can't know God if you don't love. You may be seated. Good morning. The scripture this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15. And I love this scripture because I want you to look at it through a different lens, perhaps. I want you to see the intimacy that is implied in this scripture. Kind of reminds me of one of my favorite uh, Christian writers, C.S. Lewis, who says, God is easy to, sad, easy to please, but impossible to satisfy. He said further, it's like a child who the parents applaud and take videos of those first steps. But they would be very disappointed if that's all the child ever learned to do. So think of that when you look at the scripture. It's very intimate. I am the real vine, and my parent is the farmer. God cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes, and every branch that is grape-bearing is pruned back so that it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine, you can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. When you're joined with me and I with you, the relationship, intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Separated, you can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is dead wood, gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. But if you make yourselves at home with me and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. This is how my parents' character, when you produce fruit, when you mature as my disciples, I've loved you the way my parent has loved me. Make yourselves at home in my love. If you keep my commands, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. That's what I've done, kept my parents' command, and made myself at home in that love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy may be your joy, and your joy wholly mature. This is my command. Love one another the way I loved you. This is the very best way to love. But remember the root command, love one another. Buenos días. La lectura sagrada de hoy es de Juan 15, Juan 15, del 1 al 15 y el 17. 
Yo soy la vid verdadera y mi padre es el labrador. Toda rama que en mí no, uh, no da fruto. Let me start all over again. Toda rama que en mí no da fruto, pero toda rama que da fruto, la poda para dar. Well, this is a difficult one. <laughs> toda rama que en mí no da fruto, la corta, pero toda rama que da fruto, la poda para que dé más fruto todavía. Ustedes ya están limpios por la palabra que les he comunicado. Permanezcan en mí y yo permaneceré en ustedes. Así como ninguna rama puede dar fruto por sí misma, sino que tiene que permanecer en la vid, así tampoco ustedes pueden dar fruto si no pertenecen en mí. Yo soy la vid y ustedes son las ramas. El que permanece en mí, como yo en él, dará mucho fruto. Separados de mí, no pueden ustedes hacer nada. El que no permanece en mí es desechado y se seca como las ramas que se recogen, se arrojan al fuego y se queman. Si permanecen en mí y mis palabras permanecen en ustedes, piden lo que quieran, se los concederá. Mi Padre es glorificado cuando ustedes dan mucho fruto y muestran así que son mis discípulos. Así como el Padre me ha amado a mí, también yo los he amado a ustedes. Permanezcan en amor. Si obedecen mis mandamientos, permanecerán en mi amor, así como yo he obedecido los mandamientos de mi Padre y permanezco en amor. Les he dicho esto para que tengan mi alegría y así su alegría sea completa. Y este es mi mandamiento, que se amen los unos a los otros, como yo he amado. Nadie tiene amor más grande en la vida por sus amigos. Ustedes son mis amigos, si lo hacen, yo los he mandado. Ustedes son mis amigos y hacen lo que yo les he mandado. Ya no los llamo siervos, como el siervo no está en tanto de lo que hace su amo. Los he llamado amigos porque todo lo que a mi padre le he oído decir, se lo he dado a conocer a ustedes. No me escogieron ustedes a mí, sino que yo los escogí a ustedes. Y los comisioné para que vayan y den fruto, un fruto que perdure. Así que el Padre les dará todo lo que ustedes pidan en mi nombre. Este es el mandamiento, que se amen los unos a los otros. I'd like to invite any of those young people to come up for a short little message. Okay, so some of you might know that this is my baby Jack. Do you know what Jack's favorite toy is? If you had to guess, what do you think his favorite toy is? Yeah, other than the pacifier. Do you think maybe it's like a stuffed animal? So, this is actually his favorite toy. <laughs> and I want you to just see what Jack does when I give him it. Do you see how happy it makes him? He's such a cute little vain baby. But he loves the mirror. He loves looking at himself. Um, yeah. Now let's see if I can actually take it back. This is probably a bad idea. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. OK, good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, so Jack, as you saw, really loves looking at himself. And when he looks at himself, he has the biggest smile and so much joy on his face. I sometimes like to think about the fact that the way that Jack looks at himself in the mirror is the same way that God looks at us. He looks at us, God looks at us with joy and love. Um, so now I'm going to give you the mirror. 
And you don't have to tell us, but I want you to look in the mirror, and I want you to think about what you see when you look in the mirror, whether it be something like physical on your body, whether it be something inside of you. So think about that for just a moment. And I want you all to think about it as well, too. What do you think when you look in a mirror? Because I know sometimes when I look in the mirror, the things that come to my mind are not the nicest to myself and to God. I sometimes look at myself and think, wow, those are some really dark circles under my eyes. <laughs> Or sometimes I might be a little discouraged looking at myself and thinking, wow, why hasn't this baby weight just fallen off of me? Um, but I know that um, when God looks at me, <laughs> um, that God loves me so much. And it's a miracle that I was able to have a baby. And I should be looking in the mirror and be thankful for this body because it gave me Jack. And that my body was capable to have Jack. Um, and he's such a joy in our life, obviously. Um, so I encourage you that when you guys look in the mirror, you think about the ways that God thinks about you, rather than some of the things that your mind may think about yourself. So do you know what an affirmation is? What do you, what do you think an affirmation is? that a person says to give it an announcement. Yeah, an announcement maybe to themselves, a reminder, something encouraging for themselves. So we're going to say a little affirmation, and I want everyone else to, to join in. Okay, so the next time you guys look in the mirror, I want you to say, I am a loved child of God. And God made me perfect just the way that I am. And when we say those things, um, and we say them enough, soon they start to sink in, and we actually really um, start to believe it. And then um, one of the things Kitty said earlier today was that in order to really love others, we have to learn to love ourselves. So... As we continue to internalize and say those affirmations to ourselves, learn to love ourselves the way that God loves us, we can look at others, we can see God in others, and love them even better. All right, will you bow your heads and pray with me? Dear God, I just thank you for this reminder that, that you make everything perfect and that we are loved by you. Just continue to encourage us as we look at ourselves and look at others to see you in us and you in them and that we are dearly loved and perfect just the way that we are. Amen. Thank you, Rebecca. Ready for a new song? Let's go. Let's rise and body your spirit to sing. Este sonido que cuesta No hay más lamento y tristeza Te fuerte la vida Para buenas pastillas Es tiempo de celebrar Tus hijos regresan a casa Se escribe la historia de casa No somos esclavos Más hijos amados Es tiempo de celebrar Hay muy Hay libertad en tu casa Celebración y alegría Pues solo es un nuevo día Hay jubilo Los hijos regresan a casa Se escribe la historia de gracia Los ojos esclavos Los hijos amados I will be lonely, Gaza. I live and die to Gaza. Celebration and alegría. We saw it so well. Soy su nuevo día. 
may be seated. Carol, can you come and join me so that you're here with me at the beginning? Thank you, Carol. Carol has something to share in a moment. So I wanted to begin this morning, and you'll see some plants and some signs of green and earth around you, that even though sometimes I say these funny vowels sometimes that still come out of my mouth, I'm actually from the Midwest. I grew up in Ohio, and one of the things that I really loved about being there and is a great memory for me is gardening. And my mother taught this skill. I remember the season would come, and then my dad would get out the tiller and start tilling the ground and then prepare the soil and get it ready for planting seeds. And we all participated in this activity. And my brother and sister today still till the soil and produce these amazing fruits and vegetables. And I miss out on that. I, I miss those fresh products some of which I described last week and maybe why I do visit the farmer's market still on Saturdays and why you had farmer market communion last Sunday, some of you. So I took this kind of desire for tilling and gardening with me when I went to South Africa. So I didn't do anything like the first year because I had a new baby and I was really occupied and there was no time for anything else. But when I got a little bit more into a rhythm, I thought, right, this is the season. I'm going to till the land out back. I found this great little spot, and I thought I'm going to continue this gardening tradition where I'm at. And I had the opportunity to do it. So I prepared the soil, no tiller, just shovels, right? It's really hard ground. But got it all ready, made neat rows, planted seeds, and it grew after some water and some sun, and it surprised me because I was doing it alone now. And I had these beautiful plants that came out of the ground, and I grew because I knew wise enough to choose things that were good in the soil and in the area where I was living now. So there was a lot of squash. And what I remember from growing up is that you get these huge leaves that come out from the squash plant, and then you get a flower, and then after the flower dies, out comes the squash. It was beautiful. I was so proud. I shouldn't be proud. I was very proud of these beautiful gardens. And then I noticed something. There was a little wilting, a little drying up that was happening. I haven't overwatered. We're getting plenty of sun. What's going on? And it just got worse and worse and worse. And I also didn't know what to do or to put on it, and I didn't want to use chemicals, and so I thought, well, we'll just see what happens with the experiment. Pretty soon, dead. Everything, gone. And so I started to talk to a few people about what happened and what I experienced. I said, no, really, they were beautiful. They had these big green leaves and branches like fans, and there were flowers, and they all died. And the person said to me who had experience, they said, oh, I know what happened. It happened underground. They detached the roots from the plants, these little critters. That's why I couldn't see what was happening. So that was the beginning and the end of my gardening. <laughs> but you never know about a little shoot think of cultivating self today, I wanted to share my poem called Little Green Shoot. See if you can find yourself here too. Today was the day a little green shoot surfaced. Small, fragile, and simple. Somewhat imperceptible. But this little green shoot's got roots. Yes, Today was the day a little green shoot surfaced, but many days of toil have come before. 
Picture the preparation needed to launch a great spaceship, the research, the organization, the last minute, time clock seconds before takeoff, when all power and energy are focused toward one goal, shooting up and away from gravity's grappling hands. Such is the life of this little green shoot. So simple, serene, and seasonal. Somewhat imperceptible right now. But remember, this little green shoot's got roots. Cultivating anything is hard work. Whatever we're trying to cultivate takes effort. We can take lessons from nature and the little green shoot to better understand. And it starts from the inside out. There's a whole lot going on in the inside, deep places where God works, that we cannot see. From the inside, we grow and we develop. And we know that if it's on the surface level, it's not likely to last very long. This is the second week in the series of From the Inside Out, Inwardly Cultivated, Outwardly Focused. Last week we spoke about cultivating others, which is truly the work of welcome and hospitality. And immediately after the service and everybody left and all the sandwiches were done, 11 people came looking for hospitality. Just wanted to tell you. This morning is about cultivating self. The work of rootedness. Where are you rooted? Roots was our topic during this Thursday morning's book study that we did on Zoom. We talked about and asked the question, do you know your family of origin, where you come from? Do you know about your ancestors? Why is understanding our roots so important and how does it inform us? But uncovering past generations, that quest for people, that discovery, it can also be very painful. Painful to learn the suffering they experienced or the atrocities committed by the hands of your own relatives. Or the by chance circumstance that led to your birth. Diana Butler, boss who's reading we're reading this book called Grounded that she wrote, says that the quest to connect with the past is a spiritual quest. What we discover from our own research, or maybe you've done one of those things where you swipe your mouth and send your DNA off and find out who you are, it may reveal some aspects of your life, but it doesn't help you to cultivate yourself. A few, a few years ago, and some of you may have attended, when Dr. Carey, Zareda, Daryl, and Carson offered an Advent series. One of the areas of focus was this worksheet, and we then discussed it afterwards. I'll never forget it. There are, it was a, entitled, Nine Core Beliefs That Hold You Back. These nine core beliefs are about the default settings that we tell ourselves, or maybe like Rebecca was suggesting, is the th things that we say to shame ourselves when we're looking in the mirror. These nine core beliefs are about this default setting that we return to time and time again, which are most likely rooted in something that happened to us that created the pain that took up shop in our bodies and took root. These are the nine. You may identify with more than one or most likely though there's one that's stronger than another for you. There's something wrong with me. I am unlovable. If I love someone, they will leave me. The world is a dangerous place. I am not good enough. I'm different. You have to be happy to be liked. 
everything is my fault. I am better than everyone else. There's something wrong with me. I'm defective. I'm stupid. Everything I do is wrong. It's easier not to let anyone get to know us or get too close and have them see that we are flawed. There's something wrong with me. I'm unlovable. Nobody wants me. I don't need people anyway. It's easier to avoid relationships or to choose a codependent one. If I love someone, they'll leave me. Everyone abandons me. It's easier to abandon someone else before they get that opportunity to abandon me. The world's a dangerous place. You can't trust anyone. It's just easier to play it safe. I'm not good enough. Everyone else is better than me. It's easier to hide low self-esteem that I have and sadness behind calling myself and being a perfectionist. I'm different. I don't belong. It's easier to hide who I am. You have to be happy to be liked. No one likes a sad person. It's easier to pretend that I'm fine than it is to deal with my feelings. Everything is my fault. I always get it wrong. I have to help everyone. It's just easier to say yes to everyone's requests and needs. I'm better than everyone else. I'm entitled. I'm above the rules. I have to excel. I can't go wrong. By the way, Dr. Carey is planning to lead a retreat for us, a workshop in September, and you're not going to want to miss it. So much of the hate, the political discourse that we hear, it's rooted in these nine self-core beliefs. Can you hear the last one? I'm better than everyone else. I'm the chosen. Some of you are getting it. It's sinking. It's coming. These are the places on the surface that we can see and then get displayed publicly the hate-filled conversation happening. Can you hear it? There's so much backlash going on right now with bills targeting LGBTQIA plus rights, these silly banning of books, and then giving them away like Amanda Gorman's poetry. We're experiencing a political reactionary agenda it's creating fear in so many of us, afraid to be ourselves. Increasingly difficult to cultivate who we are. And don't get me right, wrong about this either, that it's the extremes on both ends. Extreme right and extreme left slinging hate at each other. And it's coming from a place of rooted pain and hurt and trauma. One of these nine self-core beliefs. Which of those default self-core beliefs have you been listening to or saying in the mirror? Let God help you prune it. I am the real vine and my parent is the farmer God cuts off every branch of me that doesn't bear grapes, and every branch that is grape-bearing is pruned back so it will bear even more. You are already pruned back by the message I have spoken. God just declares it by speaking it, that those core beliefs are pruned back. These core nine self-beliefs are not where you're rooted. They are not our origin story because we are first rooted and grounded in love, as Kitty read. God 
first loved us. Live in me. Make your home in me just as I do in you. Make yourselves at home in my love. I've told you these things for a purpose, that my joy might be your joy, and your joy might be complete. It is in that rooting of God's where we find and are promised joy, rooted in love. Spanish Catalan mystic Raymond Lull says it this way, the lover was asked to whom he belonged. He answered, to love. What are you made of? Of love. Who gave birth to you? Love. Where were you born? In love. Who brought you up? Love. How do you live? By love. What is your name? Love. Where do you come from? From love. Where are you going? To love. Where are you now? In love. Have you anything other than love? Yes, I have faults and wrongs against, against my beloved. This is their pardon. Is there pardon in your beloved? We are born out of love. We live in love. We are destined for love. Pierre Tilhard de Chardin says, God is love, and the physical structure of the universe is love. God is love, and persuading us, and supporting us, and encouraging us in love. It is the flow between us, the current beneath us, God in love wanting the best possible good for all of us. There are a lot of stories that have been told to us about who we are. Much has happened to us that we have taken in and believed to be who we are. We have in our flawed selves acted in ways that we wish and do not want to reveal. We need to deconstruct ourselves. We are not what has happened to us. We are not what has been done to us. And we are not what people say we are. And we are not what we have done in our flawed selves. When that happens, it's sort of like those plants that got cut off by its roots. That's what it feels like when we let what others say about us take up root in our lives. It feels like our being and our blossoming and flourishing has been cut off. This is one of our planners from the courtyard. It was past tense, sitting in the direct sunlight on the brick wall there where the banner is. And then it got moved to under the red shade canopies. It is bending as far as it can reach to the sunlight. It grew sideways to reach the light. Ilya Delio says this, Every being stretches towards its own self-expressions, its longing to love as it is loved, reaching out toward more being and more life. Our roots are love, born out of divine love, reaching and stretching towards the Holy One who is love and created us in love and for love. Cultivating anything is hard work and many people make it exceedingly difficult at times for us to feel safe to be our authentic selves. 
when you hear that hateful discourse, remember the pain that is behind it. Lift up a prayer in that moment for healing and for peace. Cultivate yourself this week. Reach out for the sunlight of self-expression, trusting that you are made by love, for love, and trusting God. We can't give up now. Let us rise in body or spirit to sing. to me to decide, but how can I expect to win if I never try? said there wouldn't be trials, never said I wouldn't fall, never said that everything would go the way I wanted to go, but when my back is against the wall, and I feel like hope is gone, I'll just lift my head up to the clouds, as they help me to I just
things I made this far to make me. Let us pray. God, we just needed that song to wash over us and to remind us of this intimate relationship that we have with you, the invitation to be loved and rooted in that love. So we bring ourselves into this moment and this place, giving what is utmost in our minds and hearts this day for the things that we've given up on, for the things that we've been discouraged about lately, for the exhaustion of what we seem to hear over and over again of hate language and speech and conversation that we don't recognize and don't even know how to enter the conversation. God, present to us this week's ways that we are reminded of this rootedness in your love and that we would have opportunities to bring love to the table. And for the things now, God, that we face in our week where we don't know why this is before us or why we're facing something that we are reminded that you are with us, you are present, you are love being flowing through and around us and wanting the best for us. Not just ourselves or me and my family or those people that I know, but God, all your children. So help us, God, to have eyes to see one another as you see us through the eyes of love and acceptance, welcome of hospitality. And do the deep work, God, that each of us needs as we unroot ourselves and unwire and deconstruct from the lies that we have been told, that we're not good enough, that we have to pretend to be happy for whichever place that we find us and whichever phrase seems to be resonating today, oh God, that you could cut those branches off so that we can bear your fruits of love in the world. We pray together as a community of faith, believing in Christ, our follower, our foundation, the prayer that Jesus taught. Oh, breathing life, your name shines everywhere. Release a space to plant your presence here. Imagine your possibilities now. Embody your desire in every light and form. Grow through us this moment's bread and wisdom. Untie the knots of failure binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' faults. Help us not forget our source, yet free us from not being in the present. From you arises every vision, power, and song, from gathering to gathering. Amen. Might you add your prayers to those spoken by lighting candles symbolically in the front and the back, and please... Feel free to take your time and stand and pause for your prayer.
It is an opportunity for us to extend uh, beyond these walls to others and to continue and further the ministry and mission of First Church, one of inclusivity um, and welcome extravagant hospitality and inclusion and seeking justice. So I invite you to be a part of that mission that we feel that God has called us towards by giving here in this place or giving online, and some of you do it monthly through your banks for all the ways that we give. We give out of gratitude and out of deep joy. Waters, sovereign hand, be my God. The fear may find, fear surrounds me, it never fails, and you won't start now. And I will call upon your name. And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine oh, 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 oh. You Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water. Wherever you may call me, take me deep and let my feet ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water. Wherever you may call me, take me deep and let my feet will ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders, let me walk upon the water. Wherever you may call me, take me deeper than my feet. Live the one day, 
my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Oh. Rise, my soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours, and you are mine. God, we just want to praise you, lift you up and thank you for the joy that you place in our lives every day. We often get distracted by the, the things we did wrong, the things that we aren't, the things that we don't have. Help us to live each day like we're 90 years old. And we're given that time machine to go back to this very day and cherish this time that we have with our children, with our family, with our friends, with our loved ones. And find the joy in every moment. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Down deep 
in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul, you give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Never been so free in knowing your love for me. Never been more secure knowing your heart, God. Never been so free knowing your love for me. Never been more secure knowing your heart, God. Never been so free caught in your love for me. Never been more secure knowing your heart, God. Never been so free caught in your love for me. Never been more secure, more secure. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give me joy. Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Oh, you haven't seen me till you see me filled with joy. You haven't seen me till you see me filled with joy. No, you haven't seen me till you see me filled with joy. Joy forevermore. No, you haven't known me till you know me filled with joy. You haven't known me till you know me filled with joy. No, you haven't known me till you Never been so free, caught in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your heart, God. Never been so free, knowing your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your heart, God.